Sweatshirt. <laughs> oh, you're a Ted Lasso fan? I'm a Ted Lasso fan. If you're not a Ted Lasso fan, you probably don't have a sense of humor. <laughs> Uh, Ethan Fernea, uh played Saturday. He's back out here at practice. What does that show about him ha having to have the club and still be out there? Yeah, I mean, he could, just has a passion for playing football. And we were so excited that um, when he got the news that he'd have an opportunity to continue to play. And, um, he's, he's awesome. He just he gives you everything he's got. Um, he loves the game. He loves his teammates. And, it, and I think everybody was just genuinely happy for him that he gets to continue playing. Do you see him potentially going back in the running back rotation? Or yeah, something? you know, it's just a matter of getting him comfortable. He didn't get cleared until really late last week. Um, so we used him in a limited role on just special teams. He's been a great special teams player for his entire career here. Um, so now his, his role will start to expand back to really kind of where he was before the injury. Based on his comments earlier this week, it looks like we can now add Jimmy Lake to David Shaw and the conference coaches who admire Chip Kelly. Um, he even referenced your time going all the way back to New Hampshire and your, your role in college football development. What have you seen from Jimmy Lake in his short time of Washington in the program up there? Yeah, I mean, I, I got great respect for Jimmy. He's, he's one of the top defense coordinators out there. And now that he's become a head coach, you know, obviously we all dealt with COVID last year. They had a little bit probably more issues than we did. But um, his teams are tough. I think they're really well coached. Um, they play a physical brand of football on both sides of the ball. I think they kind of emulate his, you know, kind of his mindset, and they're doing what he wants them to do. They're going to be tough when they run the ball on the offensive side of the ball. They play outstanding defense. They get a lot of really uh, passion when they play football, and I think that comes from the head coach. So, you know, we know we when we play the Stanfords and the Washingtons in the world, then, then you know you're in for a battle. And that's what we've told our players that this is what, what it's going to be like all week long. Now I know this is kind of big picture. Doesn't deal with having a great Wednesday. But when a coach like that can quote some of your accomplishments going all the way back to the beginning of your coaching career, what does that what does that say to you? Do you take gratification in, in, in what I mean, you've I, done I, as a coach? I think all of us respect the people that you – and that if, uh, you know, you always say praise and blame is all the same, but I think when it comes from someone that you have great respect for, then, you know, it means a little bit more. I do have great respect for Jimmy. I have great respect for David. Um, there's really good coaches in this league, and, and uh, I think there's a uh, – a competitive nature to everybody in this league, but I think there's a lot of respect for the coaches in this league. And so I think it says a lot about our league. Uh, Washington's run defense hasn't been that great, but you know what? What problems Have do you, you watch see? film? <laughs> if you watch film, yeah. watch the film and then tell me that they're not great. You see 55, 91, 48, 94. Statistically, they haven't. <laughs> yeah. You know, how do you get the guys to statistics not... can get you beat? Turn the tape on. That's a really, really, really good defense. They're tough. They're physical. Uh, they get after you. Um, I think they're really well coached. Um, so, you know, we, we, we've got our hands full with their, with their defense in every facet, whether it's run or pass. Personnel-wise, what sticks out to you when you watch that tape? What, what I think how hard they play, and then also, obviously I think they're always in the, the correct spots. You know, they're very rarely are they out of position. When you look at the big play tape against their defense, there's not a lot of clips on it because they're on a lot of big plays. You know, I think um, they're going to make you go the distance. They're going to keep the ball in front of them. They tackle really, really well in space. Um, they gang tackle really well because everybody runs to the ball. So um, it's as good a defense as I've seen that we face this year. So. Jimmy's a first-time head coach. What do you remember about going from an offensive, or <clears throat> going from a quarter, coordinator role into a, a, your first head coaching job? Yeah, I, I think what you learn early is that you don't make suggestions, you make decisions. And there's a lot more involved in that. You know, when I was an assistant coach, I was the smartest guy in the world. But... I was just giving advice. I wasn't the one making the decision. You know, when you have to make um, tough decisions sometimes, it, it can be pretty lonely. You know, you take all the information you can get from the people that are stakeholders in the whole thing, but ultimately you have to make the call, and that's the, <clears throat> that's really the biggest difference, that, that you're not a, you're a decision maker, you're not a suggestion guy, and I think that's uh, there's a lot of responsibility that goes with that. How do, you, how do you prepare for a game like this where it's going to be uh, loud, cold, and rainy? Yeah, I mean, we try to simulate it as much as we can in practice, but... Um, things that we can't simulate, obviously we can't simulate the rain. We do, we do some wet ball drills, and you know we'll continue to do those in practice. Um, so we just you adjust. And the one thing we talk to our team about all the time is control what we can control. So we can't control the, that the environment part of it. So the game is the game. You know, and the, the environment for them is the same environment for us. So you know we really try not to make a big deal out of it. Do you emphasize uh, emphasize uh, holding onto the ball more or, or in different ways, especially when it is might be slippery or cold? Is that opposed to that we don't emphasize it when it's dry out? We emphasize the ball all the time. But... <laughs> it's the same thing. We just do wet ball drills this week, and that's what we've been doing, um, and we'll continue to do.
the, uh, the the playlist at practice the other day had some Seattle music, some grunge music. Was that intentional because you're you're playing Washington mean, or not up to you? One of the reasons that we play music at practice is so that you can practice auditory exclusion. So mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you what the playlist is because I don't pay attention to the playlist. So I don't know if they're playing Sinatra or grunge or whatever. You know, I think and you really notice it. Maybe the the first song that's on, they kind of you, you hear it, and then after that. You know, you're really trying to practice auditory exclusion. It's the reason that we do it. It's not that we're trying to do anything more than that. It's so that the guys can concentrate and focus on what they have to do. Is it, If it's a third down drill, you want to know, is it third and seven? You're not saying, hey, this is a good grunge tune. Because if you are saying, hey, this is a good grunge tune, then you've lost track of what we're trying to get accomplished. So it's really a distraction thing. And, and I think our kids could focus. I would, be, I would imagine if you asked them the same question, they wouldn't be able to tell you that it was a grunge play set or a... Or a LA playset or whatever it is. I don't. I don't think. Um, now I think Armac has a lot of fun with it, but um, I I haven't noticed that part. So we did ask Dorian that the other day, and he had no clue what he'd been playing all day. So if yeah, that gives you any comfort what, in that's his reason number two thousand that I'm really proud of Dorian. So um, I think that's what you're trying to get. I think that's the the emphasis of it. When you come from the outside and you're like, oh, they play music. The, the reason is we're trying to get our guys to focus and concentrate it. to your question earlier, how do you deal with crowd noise is that you have to be able to block it out and focus on the task at hand and the task at hand is that play. So really what you can get your focus and attention to is, is what we're gonna execute. But if you get caught up in the surrounding things, then that's not gonna benefit anybody. So. The statistics on the run defense say one thing, like Mike said, the game film says another, like what you said, but how hard is it going to be to get uh, significant involvement then in your running game with their run defense being as good as what you've seen? Well, that's the battle. I mean, you, 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 you don't say, hey, we, we looked at tape and they're really good at this, so we're just not going to do it. I mean, we have to run the ball to be successful. We have to throw the ball and, and keep, really, we want to be, try to be balanced in every game we play, but how the game unfolds during the course of the game is really um, how you end up managing and calling plays. So, but, um, you know, we have to execute. It still comes down to fundamentals. We have to block. They have to get off the blocks. Um, they have to tackle. We have to break tackles. You know, there's there's a lot that goes about them. You, know, you don't just look at the film and say, hey, they're good at run defense, so we're going to throw it 35,000 times in this game um, because they're good at run defense. It's now how do we scheme up what they're doing, what, what the certain fronts are in certain plays, and try to put our players in position to make plays. Do you have a favorite Ted Lasso character? No spoilers, because Tony hasn't finished the season yet. Uh, you haven't finished the season? I, I, I couldn't watch season it Season one or season I, two? What's that? Season one or season two? Oh, season two. I, I'm down to the last episode. Just haven't seen the last episode yet. I, I don't know if I've finished season two. I was a big fan of season one. Season two got a little wacky on me. But, <laughs> um, I think they're all good. Obviously, Ted's good. And I think Beard is hilarious. So Coach Beard is, is a, a very underutilized character. So. Thanks, good. Hey, Doug.